Hey there, folks. Uh, got a quickie slash addendum for you um, that I would have liked to include in my last video, but I did. Uh, I neglected to, and well, well, here we are. So, so now you you found your way here through a direct link, and uh, you know, just in case you haven't seen the other portion to this, um, I was covering the Easy Flash Air and uh, comparing it directly to the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. Uh, but what I neglected to do was compare it to both Easy Flash Definitive Editions. I should have compared it to the one that's available and not the one that I have. Uh, so now we're just going to do a quick comparison between the one that I have and the one that's available. Uh, so this one, I believe, is the Revision B or 2 or whatever. Um, you can tell because the back of the thing is marked Easy ODE, whereas the original Mega Definitive Edition is marked... Omega DE. That's the one that I use. Um, this is the revision A. If you buy one today, you'll get a revision B, unless they make a revision C eventually. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to do some of the same tests I already did with the other carts, uh, except between these two Omegas. Um, I'm going to retest with the OEM cart just to get a baseline in case that's different for some reason. It shouldn't be, but for the sake of data, uh, we're gonna double check. And then of course I've got the EverDrive here because I'm using the SD card out of it for both Omegas. Um, my Omega, the original that I use, uh, I run custom firmware on it. I have just updated it to the original firmware for the purpose of this test. So we'll be retesting that thing but I don't expect any differences or weird results or anything. Let me go and get this plugged in. All right, so we're still set to 3.7 volts, a little over an amp. Shouldn't matter, should be plenty. It's still at the same brightness level. We're gonna start with the OEM Pokemon Emerald game. It's in a custom case, but it's just normal regular game from Nintendo. Uh, so this thing is pulling at 3.7 volts, about 152 to 161 milliamps, which if I recall correctly is spot on from my last measurement. So excellent. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, next I've got the original Omega Definitive Edition, the Revision A. I already forgot what mode it's in, but we'll find out in just a second. All right, it's in mode A. Uh, oh, I should have backed that up. Uh, Emerald version. We'll do a direct boot, and I already have it written to the NOR flash, so that should speed up testing a little bit. Good, I still have my save. All right, in the overworld, direct boot, revision A, Omega Definitive Edition, Consoles pull in 178 to 184 milliamps. I don't remember what it was pulling before, but I think that's still... I, I think that's the same measurement I got before. Oh, I saw a peak of 187. Okay. Now let's try mode A nor flash, and then we'll try mode B. Oh no! I can't believe... I can't believe this. This probably doesn't matter. But I wanna... I, I wanna make the test as, as valid as possible. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry for wasting your time, and my time. 
I'm not gonna edit this out of the video. Deal with it. I never do, why change now? You got that little right arrow over on your keyboard to deal with stuff like this anyhow. All right. So, in the overworld, as soon as that's done, this thing is pulling 193 to, I think I saw 201. Yeah, 193 to 199. Not bad. Um, still higher than direct boot, but that's kind of expected. Par for the course. Uh, now let's change it to mode B and double check. Now one thing of note, I am using a different SD card for testing today than I was using yesterday because on this Omega Definitive Edition, I was using this SanDisk Ultra, uh, whereas today I'm using that A-Data card. It shouldn't make that big of a difference, but it might, so let's rule it out. All right, and mode B, we're, again, just a skosh higher than um, mode A nor flash, but um, basically the same, negligible, I'd say. Uh, 202 to 197, looks like. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Dope. All right. Now let's test the new er, Omega Definitive Edition. Uh, it's in mode A, so we'll do all the same tests in the same order. We'll direct boot that. All right, in the overworld, direct boot, I see 187 to 193. Yeah, that seems about right. So just, just a hair, just a teeny weeny little bit smaller than the uh, original. Oh wait, I didn't need to do that. Now let's try Norflash. All right, and in nor flash mode, we see 202 to 196, which just a skosh higher than the original, just a little bit. Um, basically negligible, within margin of error. Now let's try mode B. All right, and mode B, last test, the highest yet. I see peak of 207 and a valley of 199. So again, basically negligible, but I don't, it's, it's a result. It's slightly higher. Um, I guess that makes sense. Let's move on to the last test, and this one is just a sanity test. We're gonna test the uh, EverDrive once again. Um, should be nice and quick though. Oops. I must have jiggled the cords too much. Um, just a sanity check. Should be the last game I played. Yeah, buddy. All right. 
in the overworld. Lowest so far, aside from the OEM game. Low of 171, peak of 176. So, there's that. Um, I don't really like it, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, the reason I wanted to, to, to go over this, um, I've seen, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna put a real battery in here before we update the firmware. Um, I've seen people claiming that the newer Omega Definitive Edition is much more power efficient than the older one, and that never made sense to me. I remember thinking about this beforehand. I thought I tested it and I thought I published something, but I can't find that if I did. So that's the purpose of this video here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and boot this up. We're gonna throw my custom firmware back on this thing and I'm gonna, nope, I forgot to switch modes. And then I'm gonna wrap this up here. So the reason that never made sense to me Let's go over. Uh, let's go over what I know and, and why that seems silly. All right. So the original Omega Definitive Edition uses this. Well, both <laughs> Omega Definitive Editions use this big old FPGA on the back of the chip here. Um, my understanding is the reason the difference between the two, the Revision A and the Revision B, is the Revision B uses a larger FPGA, not a smaller one, a larger one. So it kind of makes sense that the larger one would use more power, um, but I never really tested it because I know the extra logic elements on the new chip aren't being utilized because it's, it's the same firmware back and forth. So if they want something to work on the original, um, they have to make it fit on the original. And if it fits on the original, it's gonna fit on the new one too. So that always seemed a little silly to me. I'm not 100% sure why they ran out or what happened, I... Hunch says it's a different package chip or something like that. So let's just take a quick peek and see what's going on. Uh, I've got mine reflashed again, so all of my saves should start working again. The custom firmware uses a slightly different folder layout, which results in saves not working when you switch between the two. Okay, so the original is using a Xilinx Spartan 6, God, I can't read that, uh, XC5SLX9, and the new one is also using a Xilinx Spartan 6, this is an XC6SLX16, um, so yeah, bigger number, bigger chip. Uh, the package itself looks to be about the same, the pitch for the BGA is about the same. Um, so it's it, it's probably all the same motherboard and the only real difference is um, like maybe since this chip has more logic elements it assigns pins a little bit differently. That's that's my guess. That I, I, I don't know. Uh, but either way, bigger chip usually means less power efficient because that's just generally how things go. Uh, so in this case, the fact that it's basically negligible, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's worth paying any attention to those rumors. Um, and I guess one last thing, since I have it apart, uh, and since it technically coincides with uh, the original video I was trying to make, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my Omega Definitive Edition into this clear case that was made for the Omega Definitive Edition. We'll just... Put that side by side, the Easy Flash Air, so you can see what I was talking about yesterday. You can see the uh, Easy Flash Air has a smoother texture and therefore is slightly more see through than the Omega Definitive Edition. Um, but because this is the Definitive Edition case, the older one, it's not going to work for the Air. But at least I can make it clear. I don't know. That's all I got. Um, thanks for watching. Just like the old video, I'm going to compile these results and put them in the description. Um, I'll probably even put them in the description of the original video as well. Um, that's all I've got. Um, thanks for watching. Um, links in the description, etc., etc. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks.